Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, be very skeptical of, be very cautious of, be very wary of too much concentration of power. Right? You put too much power in anyone's hands and suddenly they start bending the rules. They start making up their own rules. They start creating illusions. They start undervaluing the good things in the sport of boxing. Now I'm going to throw a red flag here on a few things that I think are absolutely ridiculous. Right? We the fans are sovereign. Right? We the fans should be able to tell the powers that be we're not having it. This is an outrage. Now first, let's talk about these ridiculous prices. And I mean ridiculous prices. Right? Understand here in America, our economy is tenuous. It's so tenuous that our own Federal Reserve is doing what's, what they're calling quantitative easing. They're monetizing our debt, right? They're buying a lot of government bonds. It's outrageous, right? Our government has received record tax revenue and we're still running a huge deficit. Now against this backdrop, we're hearing that the MGM, according to reports, is going to charge $150 a head, not for the live fight, but for some closed circuit setup. So if you're in Las Vegas, and if you want to see the fight, but you're not going to be able to attend the fight, they want to charge you $150 a head. Now let me say this, and I don't say it lightly, and understand I'm a market-based guy. I'm a libertarian, right? I went to Vegas for Mayweather Cotto. This was one of those rare times where rather than be in some sports book, I decided, okay, let me go buy the closed circuit, right? So I was at, and I'm going to name names, I was at the pub at the Monte Carlo Casino having paid hundred and fifty dollars seventy five for myself seventy five for my girl right we got tickets the tickets had seat numbers on them and all that other good stuff so we're out partying I go into this outfit and then they tell me there's no assigned seating it's even worse than that folks for many people there were no seats I stood up I remember it like it was yesterday because Canelo against Shane Mosley on the undercard went the distance. Then Floyd Mayweather against Miguel Cotto went the distance. The MGM took me for $150 and didn't even have the decency to give me a seat to sit in. Now my advice to anyone who's going to buy you know, any kind of closed circuit anything from the MGM for the Mayweather Pacquiao fight is to call the casino. Find out if they're just gonna herd you into some place like the pub at Monte Carlo with a screen and fewer seats than people. Find out if the 150 ahead that you're paying to watch this fight gives you a seat. Right? If it doesn't, really. If you're a high roller, you need to call the casino and say, excuse me, what the hell is going on? Aren't y'all making enough money off this fight? Right? Are you trying to get me to go down the street to some other casino? Right? Understand, the MGM owns the Monte Carlo and a few other places. The $150 ahead is a joke price. Right? You can't order the fight on pay-per-view at your casino. So what they're trying to do is to get a bounty from you. Right? If you decide to go watch it on closed circuit. 
right? It's ridiculous. Now let's talk about the pay-per-view costs. That's ridiculous. Here in the United States, you realize we're paying more than twice what they're paying in the United Kingdom for this fight. You realize, according to reports, you're going to pay $99 for the HD fee of this fight. 99 bucks. Right? Now think about it. That's a bargain compared to the $150 for one ticket, per ticket, to watch it closed circuit in Vegas. But still, $99? You and I know the way these prices go. Right? This is going to set a new benchmark for a premium fight. Good luck getting the promoter to charge you less than $99 for, let's say, a Vladimir Klitschko Deontay Wilder fight. Good luck. Right? I'll just say that I'm a bit surprised. Um, one would think that somewhere along the line, someone would say, let's cut the fans a break. Right? You know, somewhere along the line, someone would realize that there are ways to pirate this film, right, without paying these ridiculous prices, right? This, this is ridiculous. Well, anyway, let me shift gears. Peter Quillen gave up the middleweight title at one point, right? Now, you know... In life, there's always the real reason, and then there's the very good reason, right? People will use a very good reason to, uh, you know, justify and hide decisions they make based on the real reason, right? Now, behind the scenes, people know that Jay-Z's promotional group, was going to promote the fight. It was going to be a blockbuster. It was going to leave everyone with a lot of money. Right? According to industry rumor, Jay-Z and Al Heyman are not on the best of terms. Right? These two guys really aren't that fond of each other. I doubt that these guys exchange Christmas cards. We'll just put it that way. Right? Al Heyman is an advisor to Peter Quillen. So we already know that Peter Quillen, who defended the middleweight title three times and who is still unbeaten, is the kind of guy who is prepared to walk away from belts, right? This is that age-old question in boxing. Does the belt make the fighter or does the fighter make the belt, right? Peter Quillen doesn't feel like he needs that middleweight title as a part of his life. And his brand already is championship level because boxing hardcore fans will say, hey, this guy was the middleweight champion, right? So, and to me, this is unacceptable, right? Let me be clear. Peter Quillen shows up to the weigh-in for his fight against middleweight champion Andy Lee. Right? Andy Lee got the belt that Peter Quillen walked away from. Right? This fight was advertised as a middleweight championship fight. So Peter Quillen shows up almost a pound and a half overweight. Now, folks, I got to tell you, if you're a big middleweight and you understand that making weight is an integral part of the sport, as Peter Quillen does... Then showing up a pound and a half over is not an accident, right? In my opinion. I'm just going to throw out the opinion there for legal reasons, right? Everyone shows up at the way and everyone's smiling and stuff like that. I'll buy the idea of a guy showing up just a smidge over, right? 0.2 of a pound, like Lamont Peterson did, and then being able to make weight. Okay, I'll buy that. Maybe the, uh, just my luck, I gotta run.